What's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April, and you know what time it is. It is Wednesday, Real Talk Wednesday. So this Wednesday, I do have a drink, okay? And let me tell you guys, it is in a plastic wine glass because it seems like glasses in general do not last too long in my house, meaning the kids end up breaking them. So I had like one little wine glass left, and I decided to get these because at least I'll be safer. So yes. I got some tequila and some pineapple juice and some grenadine and I'm just sipping away. And it's kind of early in the day. It's um, 147. And also I have in my hand the blue cigarette. Okay. So if you guys don't know, I used to smoke a long time ago and I was smoking like my real talk videos um, or when I got stressed out by a wig in a video and I quit smoking. So um, it started becoming, it started calling me again, the cigarettes. Unfortunately, I did smoke a couple of them and it wasn't really a great feeling. I really had like a guilty self-conscious vibe I really felt bad about it so um, because I stopped for so long so I went out and I bought this um, and it does the trick um, and these are actually what helped me quit before it wasn't this brand but it was another brand um, that actually you would charge you would charge actually charge it so this one I've had for a few days and I think I need a new one because it's just not as strong as it was, but it's menthol flavored. It's 10 bucks, so you can buy the refillers, which is like 42 bucks. So, yeah, I've been using this just to not smoke because I don't want to go back to that filthy habit. And for those of you who smoke, I'm not judging you. But for me, I just don't want to do it anymore because I went so long without doing it, and I really don't want to do it anymore. So I will... light up this oh, I don't really have to light it up all I gotta do is pull it in so yeah so just keeping it real so you guys know that's how I feel about the cigarettes so I'm trying I'm trying because I really don't want to go back to that um and as for the hair that I'm rocking today this is by best lace wigs this is not a wig it is a wig but they didn't make it I made it they actually wanted me to review their kinky straight hair and so they sent me three bundles of two uh, two twenty twos and a 20 and a 14 inch closure because that was the longest closure they had so it's rather long and it's actually really pretty however the downfall oh the downfall is that the wig is not on straight okay there we go the downfall with the wig is that the hair texture is not as kinky as I would prefer it because once you flat iron the ends the texture kind of changes it doesn't get silky like that but it doesn't stay as kinky so it's more like to me crimps in it so if you get this hair be very leery about flat ironing it especially on high heat I would advise to do that because um you'll lose you'll lose like some of the crinkles or crimps in it but it's beautiful hair three bundles I had to split the tracks on like a quarter of the last track because it wasn't enough and that's only because of me I um I sew my tracks rather close because I don't like to have like this huge space in between tracks I'm just so funny I don't want it to be blown in the wind and you see the cap so that's what I do so yeah um other than that Let's get into this real talk because it is Wednesday and if you guys don't have a drink then you better find something to drink on. And this is numero uno, no, dos, dos. This is dos for me. Dos. Dos drink. Dos drink. Mm -hmm. These are actually going to be long. Like I hope I can get to three because these emails are long. So anyway... If you want a real talk video about your life situations, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and please put in the subject line, real talk. If you prefer to change the names of the people in your email, such as yourself, you can go ahead, go ahead and let me know that you changed them. And that way I don't have to think of a name for you guys. So, yeah, let's get into it.
And this one is so cool because the name she changed it to is actually a wig that I had made and I named it that what she changed it to. Okay, I'm a huge fan of yours. Hi, hey April, I'm a huge fan of yours. I love your beauty tips and I use a lot of them myself. Here's the deal. You can call me Jordan. I'm a married woman and have been with my husband for 10 years. You can call him Tim. Tim is in the military and we have two children together. We are high school sweethearts. In the beginning with Tim, our marriage was really rocky. I married Tim fresh out of high school and I knew he wasn't ready. He would cheat and neglect his duty as a husband and father and blame it on his career. The last time he cheated was six years ago with a woman beneath him in rank. Meaning in rank in the military. I found out I found out because this bitch had the nerve to post the pictures on my Facebook page. Now I guess when the thing between him and Miss Loose Pussy started, they were deployed for nine months. While they were gone, he emailed and told me he wanted a divorce. Mm. I was pissed, but told him that he needs to come home and tell me that to my face like a man, or like a real man. Well, when that time came, he came home with his tail between his legs like a bitch. She was pissed, so Miss Loose Pussy tried to embarrass me. She pretended to be pregnant, tried to ruin his career, and would call his phone private day and night with private numbers. This bitch even made friends with one of my best friends who I didn't tell about the situation using a fake name on an account. Then when my friend invited her to a big birthday party on a rooftop club she threw for me, this bitch came. Well, long story short, I beat that bitch so bad she stopped the bullshit. So Tim hurt me so bad I shut him... I, so Tim hurt me so bad I shut myself down from him completely. I was ready to be done. Then he suggested marriage, count, marriage counseling. I went kicking and screaming, but it helped us a lot. After being disconnected, we became strong. He became a great husband, a father, and a man all over. Now here we are years later. Tim has kept his words and haven't disrespected our marriage since. But now Tim has gotten lazy. I do all the cooking, cleaning, and taking care of the children. Tim spends more time at work and never wants to do date night. I work outside the home too. Tim gets upset when I tell him I need more passion and more conversation. When I try to talk to him, he looks past me and straight forward towards the TV. He's gaining a lot of weight. He never notices when I put in any effort to look great and pretend to be asleep when I try to take him down. I checked his phone, emails, and I even followed him. No other woman. So I was devastated and lost. So I started going to the gym and focusing on the children. We went back to marriage counseling. Even the counselor said he's being lazy and he needs to put more effort into this marriage. But in September, but, but, but in September, April, shit got real. While at the gym, I hired a personal cha trainer. Let's just call him Jackson. Jackson is very sexy, but I've always been just a window shopper because I'm a married woman. Well, back in September was Jackson's birthday, and he asked me to come to dinner with him after our session. I said, why not? We've been working out since early March and have been become good friends. We went to dinner and had a wonderful time. After dinner, I called Tim and told him I was on my way home. Tim told me he took the kids to the movies. He said he took the counselor's advice and wanted to spend more time with the kids. So Jackson asked if I didn't have to hurry home. Can I have a drink with him at his condo? Every alarm went off in my head, but I went anyway. So stupid. We had a drink, and that turned into three. Next thing I know, here I am, legs wide open, him on his knees on his 6'4 patio, feasting on me like his last great meal. It was the best oral sex I've ever had. I have so many orgasms that I lost count. So before he was about to dive in, he picked me up and carried me into the house to his kitchen counter. He then stepped away to the bathroom, to the bedroom to get a condom, and that's the moment I came to my senses. I got dressed and damn near ran out of his place. I missed my last few sessions with him because I'm so ashamed of my behavior to go back. He's been texting me, asking if I'm okay, and saying that he's sorry he crossed the line. I wanted to tell him it's not his fault and continue our sessions, but I'm a chicken. I don't want to tell anyone because I've always been loyal and faithful, but it's eating me alive. I want to tell my husband, but I don't want him to leave. I love him. Also, I've been dreaming of Jackson every night since. I don't know what to do. I love my husband and I want my family, but I disrespected my vows that I put so much work into. So stupid of me. Please give me some advice. Thank you in advance, April. Jordan. 
Ooh, so I'm gonna take a drink. And I'm gonna take a pull. I like really pull hard. So did you hear that? Jordan has been married to her husband for 10 years, I think it was, she said. 10 years and they have some children together. Um, and he was deployed and so he was basically messing around with Miss Loose Pussy. I like that saying, Miss Loose Pussy, Miss Loose Pussy, because there's enough of them out here. But so the bitch, um, Miss Loose Pussy was writing shit on Jordan's Facebook about how she's pregnant and how she just basically played Jordan. So basically her husband did cheat. And now here it is that he's gotten his vows together. However, he plays possum when she wants to get busy on him at night. He looks past her and watches the TV. He really doesn't hold any conversation and he's lazy. He doesn't do shit. Okay, but go to work, but don't do shit. And she works as well, but she does everything else. So, she decided to take her mind off the marriage and not really totally off the marriage, but or but off of the complications of the marriage and get herself together. And maybe that will preserve the marriage, but they've also went to marriage counseling, which has helped. So, in the meantime, in between time, Miss Jordan Got herself a personal trainer named Jackson, who is totally sexy and hot. And they become really good friends, and they went out for drinks. They went out to eat, rather, went back to his place for drinks. Three drinks later, she got her, her, her legs wide open like the Red Sea, just wide the fuck open while he feasting on her. He didn't get to stick it in, but he got to eat it. And she said it felt real good. So what should she do because she feels bad and she disrespected, <clears throat> she disrespected her wedding vows? Let me tell you something, Jordan, okay? And this is just my personal opinion. Okay, you know what? You, you, did, you did cross the line, unfortunately. You crossed the line. <sighs> Sometimes they say, what's the old saying? What you don't know won't hurt you. Okay, what you don't know won't hurt you. And I'm not saying this because it's right. I'm not saying this because it's wrong. But some things you just got to keep to yourself. Like seriously, some things you just need to keep to yourself. And unfortunately, it's probably eating you up inside because you've cheated on your husband. And I'm not saying, oh, well, he cheated on you. So that's not going to make it any better because that's just your moral values. But... You've already confessed to your sins. Even if it wasn't in church, it was to me and everybody on YouTube as a confession. You know, like Usher says, here is my confession. I really can't sing, but you've already confessed it. And I'm not saying that just because you confessed it to us that it makes it right. But you have let the cat out of the bag and you've said what you dealt with and how it makes you feel. And from this point on... What I would suggest is, yeah, you probably are embarrassed and you probably feel really uncomfortable seeing Jackson as your personal trainer. So my first advice to you is to get yourself a new, per new personal trainer. If that gym that you go to is a chain gym, meaning there are, it's like a Planet Fitness or a LA Fitness, you know, they got they are goals, like they got more than one. What I would say to you is to find yourself a new gym. Because the longer or the more you go there and be around Jackson, you're going to lust him. Because you've already been dreaming about him. So to keep it at a distance, I would get personally, if you cannot find another gym, I would definitely get a new personal trainer. Or do it yourself. Go to the gym without a personal trainer and work on yourself. You don't really need anybody there. A lot of people like these personal trainers. But you can do it on your own. I lost a lot of weight without a personal trainer, and I was good. But I really don't think that it's a good idea for you and Jackson to be training together. Because what you're going to think of while he's training you, and what he's going to think of while he's training you, is not going to be lifting weights and running on the treadmill. Okay? It might be lifting your ass up in the, in the air and pounding you out. So that's why I'm saying I think like it's in your best interest to get a new trainer and if you have 
another gym that's close to you that's affordable or it's another train a same chain gym i would change it because i don't like me personally i never like to be put in an uncomfortable awkward situation and to me if i'm married and i cheated that would be an uncomfortable situation for me unless i plan on doing it again okay so i would change gyms not saying I was going to tell my husband because I've had a situation like this. It's not the same, but it's kind of the same because it, it didn't eat me up inside, but it kind of bothered me. And I really couldn't believe that April did such a thing. So, yeah, when well, my husband was in gym, I, I'm gym, in cheer. He had never been in a gym. Well, he's been in a gym, but while he was in jail, I did cheat on him a few times um, with the person I'm with now. And... Um, At first, it didn't bother me, and it really, you know what, at first, it didn't bother me at all, you know what I'm saying, it, it really didn't bother me at all, because I guess he did it to me a few times, and it wasn't even like I was getting back revenge or being spiteful, it was something that I wanted to do, but I never told him, and I wanted to tell him, but a part of me was like, for what, what does it even matter, it's just not going to make any situation better, and you're probably going to break him down to hurt him, but I did confess to what I did to my best friend, and I let her know, like, that it was really good, <laughs> whatever, um, but I, I'm going to be honest and tell you, I didn't feel bad about it, I didn't feel bad about it, okay, yeah, I did, I, I disrespected my marriage vows, I didn't feel bad about it, and I didn't feel good about it. I felt neutral. It was just basically like, this is what I need. This is what I want. This is who I want, and I really don't want to be with this person anymore. I want to be with this person I'm sleeping with. So I could understand, you know, but in a part of me, it was kind of like fucking with me just a little bit, only because, you know, that was still my husband, and that was just basically it. That's the only moral value that I had towards it. However, sometimes some things are left better unknown, okay? And it's unfortunate that I have to say that on a video, but I'm going to just be real and keep it real with you. Do you really honestly think for one fucking split second, Jordan, that your husband is going to come to you and confess every fucking thing that he did while he was deployed away from you, okay? Do you really think that he's going to do that? What do you even know what's going on with him now? You think that there's no woman? Bitch, you don't really know that. And I'm not trying to be calling you a bitch because I feel like it. I'm saying that because I'm your friend. But he don't want to have sex with you because he's pretending to be possum and be sleep. He doesn't really pay you attention. But y'all still going to marriage counseling. This is why I say that marriage counseling don't always work because motherfucker's still doing dumb shit. What is his whole reason for pretending to be sleep while you, you want to, you know, be intimate with him? Is it because he has someone else? Because like you said, all he does is work. So do you honestly feel like Tim, your husband, is going to confess all his sins to you that he's done behind your back since day one? He's not, and he's not. And who would? I'm not even going to say your husband, but who the fuck would? If you don't know the shit, huh, you ain't going to find out about it. Here's my thing. If you find out about some shit and I cannot cover it up, I'm going to confess it. Okay, and that's what he's done. He's confessed to what he couldn't cover up because Miss Luke's pussy was busy putting your business out there. Or his business with her out there. All on your Facebook, befriending you and shit like that. And you got to beat the bitch ass. I applaud you for beating the bitch ass because I would have beat the bitch ass too. And I'm not condoning beat bitches asses because it's not a cool thing. However, bitch, if you know you disrespected me and you know that's my husband and you disrespected me on purpose and you doing some spiteful sly shit, bitch... Bitch, you deserve your ass fucking whipped, okay? So I commend you on whipping that bitch ass. Because had you not did it, I would have surely asked you for her address, my fucking self, and be like, I'm going to beat her ass, and when I'm done, Jordan, I'm going to beat your ass for not beating her fucking ass. So I commend you on that. Because some bitches out here, and I'm going to just say it like that, and you guys, you girls know who the fuck y'all are. Some of these bitches out here need to get fucked the fuck up. And I'm just sorry. But they'll know that that's your fucking man. And they'll do shit anyway. They don't just they just don't give a fuck. They'll throw shit in your face. And they'll do it just to be spiteful. And be some nasty crab ass bitch. 
So, I'm going to say it like that. Some of y'all bitches deserve an ass whooping, a beat the fuck down, okay, from a real woman. Because real women don't play that shit. You fuck with minds, and if you know you fuck with minds and you're doing it to be spiteful, you best believe I'm going to fuck you up. And when you when, when I'm done with your ass, I'm going to go home and I'm going to fuck that nigga up. Everybody's going to get an ass whooping, and I'm not going to get an ass whooping. But everybody else, everybody else is going to get an ass whooping. So, I commend you on that. However... If you think that Tim, for one split second, is confessing everything to your ass, then you dead ass fucking wrong. Nobody confesses everything to anyone in a relationship, okay? Regardless of how you may feel, we don't spill all the beans up to our new relationship, about our past relationship. We don't do shit like that, okay? And though you guys went to marriage counseling and you think that he's being honest and he ain't doing shit, that's where you get it fucked up at because you already said he's not messing around. Bitch, you don't know what the fuck he's doing at work. He could be smiling and whining and dining some fucking army bitch in her face, okay? You really don't know. So I'm telling you, don't go confess your sins, all your sins. You've already confessed them by talking to us, by telling us your business. What I think you should do is leave that gym the fuck alone. If you can't leave that gym alone, leave Jackson's ass the fuck alone. And unfortunately, he made you feel good. He probably made you feel like a woman again because your husband isn't doing that. And he's not putting it down in the bed. And what do you expect? What do you really possibly expect if he's laying there and he's not putting in any work and he's not even trying to put in any work sexually with you what are you supposed to fucking do somebody that's giving you attention and is treating you like a lady and is showing you affection and then noticing your body changing and your attitude and yourself what do you expect people are vulnerable not just women but people are vulnerable regardless male female we're vulnerable if you're not giving one person the attention that they need in a relationship they are going to seek it elsewhere and however jordan wasn't seeking it elsewhere but shit happens and shit fucking does happen okay and i'm gonna say it like this at least you got your rocks the fuck off and you felt good and you didn't take it to the extreme um to the extreme is penetration if he would have penetrated you that would have been like some really, I, I mean, I can't even judge you for that because I've done that already, you know, with my fiance that I'm with now by cheating on my ex-husband with him. And I'm I'm not ashamed to say it, you know what I'm saying? Because it is what the fuck it is. I'm not going to say I'm sitting here and be an angel and be like, yeah, I never did this and never did that. But what do you expect when this motherfucker is drinking and driving and fucking up my shit and starting shit and crashing my cars and stealing my money and I just don't want to sleep with you? What do you expect? And going to jail all the time. What do you expect? I'm You're not the man that I want and I want this man right here. So what do I do? I get involved with him. Because he made me feel good. And he makes me feel good to this day. And a lot of people ask me, what if your husband was to watch these videos? And I don't give a rat's ass, okay? It is what it is. He's had his bullshit in his past. And it's not to be spiteful, but it is what it is. And I've already told him. Anyway, I basically told him, you know, that this is who I've been seeing. And this is what who I was seeing for a while. Okay, so he already knows. He kind of figured it out. Like, oh, she was messing with him. Because he always says shit. But anyway, Tim is not going to confess all his sins to you. He's not going to tell you all the shit that he's done behind your back. What for? I ain't going to let the cat out of the bag. If you don't fucking know, I'm going to let you continue not fucking knowing. I'm not saying be secretive and do shit behind his back. If it makes you feel bad, don't do the shit again. However, don't go... Letting all the beans out, okay? Because he's not going to do it for you. You've already told how you felt. You've already confessed it. Woosa. Fucking woosa and breathe. And leave the gym or that trainer the fuck alone. Because as long as you train with him and you do sessions with him, bitch, you're going to have it in the back of your mind. That nigga ate real fucking good. And I want to know what the rest of the package is like. Because if he can give you multiple orgasms while eating your motherfucking pussy, I'm pretty sure he can hump the shit out of you, okay? And that's what's going to run in the back of your head. So why even bother? If you really want to work things out with your husband, then continue to do that. Go to the counselor. Can you go to the counselor separate and talk about your issues with the counselor? Because here's my thing with this whole marriage counselor shit. 
Y'all are sitting here together as a couple. I can't really tell the counselor, yo, this nigga is a piece of shit. He can't fuck and all of this. You can't tell the the counselor that in front of the person because why would you want to do that? He just pretends to be sleeping. He knows he can't fuck. So, I, you know, and I did this with this person and I did that with that person. You cannot tell the counselor that in front of your husband. So that's why I don't think that going to a marriage counselor, couples counseling together all the time is like this really good thing because what you really want to say is not what you really can say. You have to have some type of regards for the person that's sitting there with you. Regardless if you're going to counsel together, you don't want to say too much shit that's going to fuck the person up for the day, for the moment, for the lifetime. You have to have some type of regards and know what the fuck you're talking about and just put some type of common sense and a little, you know, pause on shit. You gotta sugarcoat shit. Even in marriage counseling. So that's why I don't think that it's really genuine and that people are going to marriage counseling for good reasons. Sometimes I think it's just a scapegoat to keep the person in a relationship with them and say, well, you know what? We can go to marriage counseling and then it's gonna make everything better. But it doesn't work for everybody. For some it may and for some it doesn't. But here's my thing. If you can go to marriage counseling without Tim, then I would suggest that you do that. And confess to the counselor and see what they say. But my advice to you, I would not fuck with Jackson anymore as my personal trainer. Unless you want to get into some real shit with him, meaning into a relationship. And if it's going to make you guilty and it's going to make you feel guilty, why bother? Don't let something inside eat you up because somebody else is doing some shit to you. If your husband is not sleeping with you and he's not paying you attention, then there is a problem. And that problem needs to be addressed. You either need to sit down with him personally and not in front of the marriage counselor because some things said in front of people are just a little bit too emotional other people get emotional they're embarrassed but what i think you need to do jordan actually is tell him yo listen every time i want to fuck you want to go to sleep or you want to pretend to go to sleep you don't pay me attention what the hell are we in a relationship i'm a woman i have needs i have wants i got motherfucking requests Okay, and you are not fulfilling those. And as a husband, I really think that you should. So these things need to be said in front of him. Fuck the marriage counselor because that's embarrassing sometimes. Say it in front of him, just you and him. And let him know how you're feeling. Don't go blur it now. Yeah, I let the, the personal trainer eat my pussy. Don't tell him that. Okay, because you know something? It's, it's really strange, but it's true. When men cheat, it's not okay, but when they cheat on us, it's like they apologize and we forgive them. But when we cheat on them and they find out, we are all types of whores. They can't fuck with us no more. They fucked up so bad mentally. They keep looking at us differently. It's like some, it's like a real trivial type of shit. Like, what the fuck? Nigga, you just fucked this bitch and got her pregnant and here it is. I slept with somebody with a condom and then you acting like this. Like, really? So, that's what I'm saying. Don't go fucking blurting out all your business. Don't go be an usher. Here are my confessions. Don't do no shit like that. Okay? Seriously, don't do that shit. But, tell that man, listen. Are you going to give up the goods or what? Because I'm a woman and I have needs and wants. Don't be, don't be so cocky as to say, and if you don't, somebody else will. Because, I'm pretty sure Tim already knows that. However, here's my thing, Jordan. Don't go telling your husband what you done fucking did. If you got a church, go to your church and confess. Or make sure they don't run back, run their mouths, and tell um, Tim. But, because, like I said, he ain't confessing everything to you. And like Miss Loose Pussy said on your Facebook, she said it right there for you. She made it blatantly clear that they was cheating. And I'm pretty sure you don't know everything that you think you know with Miss Loose Pussy and um, Tim. So... You know what I'm saying? Just like this. Get it together. Do the right thing. Leave fucking Jackson alone. Get a new personal trainer and get on your grind. But don't fuck with Jackson like that unless you want to have a relationship with him. And who knows? He's a personal trainer. He's all buff and big. He probably fucks bitches on the regular and it ain't nothing like that. But I wouldn't fuck up my marriage for no personal trainer. That I wouldn't do. But I would try to make amends with my husband, meaning spiritually. And see what's going on in his head. Because you never know. He might have some issues that he just can't deal with. That's just my opinion. 
So let Jordan know, what would you guys do? Would you spill the beans? Would you confess? Would you tell all the business? Would you go back and tell your husband what the fuck you did? I don't know. Some shit is just better left unknown. You know what I'm saying? Like, if my husband or my, my fiance cheated on me, I mean, I'm going to say I want to know, but then some things I want to find out, but some things that went down, I really don't want to know because it, it scars a person mentally and a lot. So I really don't want to know every detail and some things I just don't want to know. Some things are better left let alone. You know what I'm saying? Why wake sleeping dogs or whatever the saying is, just don't. Because people will look at you totally different once you do. Totally different. Okay, so that was a long one. And here is the next one. And unfortunately, we have 12 minutes left, so I'm only going to be able to do <clears throat> two. Okay. I've been watching your channel since the very first one. Thank you so much for all the work you do on your videos and tutorials. I am wanting your wonderfully honest opinion on a situation. A bit about me. I am 26 and I have been at my current job for almost three years. I have not been in many relationships in life and dated the same man throughout college. I moved on after graduation from one negative situation and it seems I have myself in another one now. I foolishly began dating a co-worker about two years ago. It became apparent that it was no good after a while as he would hid a relationship from me and even had a baby over the past year with this woman he had been seeing all along. He was not open about the child or the relationship to me, but to other co-workers he was. I feel as if I would have cut ties a long ago, but since we work together and see each other daily, I have been unable to do so. Over the past few months, I have tried to separate myself, stay positive, and ignore him, but it has been impossible. He has, been, he has even began dating another co-worker, and I have to see them together daily. Yet, he still attempts to talk to me and be friends. It is embarrassing to come to work and have everyone know we dated and he, on all the dirt he did behind my back. I'm guessing this will not end until I change jobs and move. Until then... How should I go about staying positive during the day and keeping the drama away? It is very difficult looking in the face of someone who lied to me, hurt me, and continues to be disrespectful by dating another co-worker and continuously pursuing me as well. This has led to many arguments while on the job. Thank you for reading this and even more so for any response. Okay, so we're going to call her Tammy. So Tammy, Tammy has dated a co-worker. Uh, and, well, they're still co-workers, so she's dated a co-worker and they were dating for about two years. And everybody at the job place knows all the dirt that he's done, that she's done. with all, Whatever business they had in a relationship, Tammy's co-workers know. And now that they're not together, he's dating somebody else that also works with them. However, while he was dating Tammy, he's hit things like he was already in a relationship. He has a baby, et cetera, et cetera. What should she do? She wants to stay positive at work. But he's still trying to talk to her and pursue shit. Let me tell you something, Tammy. First of all, I don't really have no qualms, no rules against dating co-workers. Because if you find a person interesting and attractive, that's who you find attractive and you get to know them. And if there is somebody at your job, then uh, so be it. There's somebody at your job. A lot of people put expectations like, nah, I'm not going to date anybody from my work. But you cannot help who you fall in love with. And that's just a known fact. You cannot say, well, I'm at work and this is my workplace. I'm not going to fall in love with you. No, it's just not going to happen. You cannot give, tell the heart what it wants. The heart wants what it wants. And that's just the bottom line. So you cannot fight who you fall in love with. You cannot fight love. It's just that simple. It doesn't matter if it's at work, if it's at church, if it's at the ice cream parlor, if it's at workout gym or what have you. You cannot tell the heart what it wants. And that's just final with it. However, let me tell you something. That man is a fucking bullshitting dog. So he's fucked with you for like two years on your job. Meanwhile, he's had a relationship and had a baby on you. And everybody at work knows your fucking business. Now he's dating somebody else at your job and you're getting tired of seeing them together. What for? Why not? I wouldn't even give a fuck because let me tell you like this. First of all, bitch, you got my sloppy seconds. I didn't want him so you can fucking have him because he ain't even worth my time. I wouldn't even see no problem with it. I wouldn't even give a fuck because if I don't want the loser, why the fuck should it matter? You want to have him, have Adam. Have a good time fucking him. Maybe have a baby with him. Get fucking married. But don't come over in this area with your bullshit. And tell your friend, your ex-boyfriend that you was at work with, look, this is work. 
I come to work. I'm not coming to make friends with you. I'm not coming to conversate with you. I'm here for work, for a paycheck, and nothing more than that, okay? So you got your little girlfriend, Sally, over there. Continue to be with her, but please stop interrupting me while I am in my professional environment because this is work, and that is how I plan on keeping it as work-related. A lot of people don't see that. Now, here's the thing. I don't really fuck with too many people. And when I did have a job, I didn't really fuck with too many people either then. Because I don't need people in my job. Some people at work always want to get so close and touchy-feely, lovey-dovey, want to know your business. I don't fuck with people at work because I don't need you in my business. Because a bitch like me, once you be in my business and I know you're trying to be in my business, it's a fucking problem. So I try to alleviate all of that. You know, that's where I met my ex at is at my place of business, my job. We work together. And you know what? I was so glad that we stopped working together. He stopped and he went to another job. He started working in the hospital. I'm glad because I don't need nobody in my business. However, Tammy, what you going to quit for? Don't quit because Miss Loose Pussy or Miss Loose Dick is at your job and they want to flaunt it. Why would you even care? He's a dog. And we all know that he's a dog now because he's already had a relationship while he was fucking with you and had a baby on you. So he's really not worth your time and effort or concern. If this is the bitch he want to fuck with now, then let him. I guarantee you that this bitch at your job is not the only bitch. What happened to his relationship? He's got a baby with that relationship. I'm pretty sure he still has that relationship going on. And if not, I'm pretty sure when he goes over and sees that baby, he can fuck his baby mama whenever he wants. Some niggas just got it like that. However, you at the workplace. Never mind that nigga. Never mind that bitch. You here to work. She got him now. Let, you know what? She got him now. Along with that, she got a fucking headache now. I never let nobody see me sweat. I never let nobody bring me out of character. There are some times when I do let somebody bring me out of character. However, when you bring me out of character... Just realize that there's some shit behind what is about to happen if you bring me out of my character. But I'm not a be about to be at work and let this bitch know that I'm hating and I'm being I'm mad or I'm jealous or I'm feeling some type of way because you fucking him now. No, sweetheart, that's where you got it fucked up. Never let nobody see you sweat. Never let nobody know how you feel. If you still got feelings for that nigga... Oh, well, fuck that nigga because he ain't really about shit. Like I said, he had a relationship. And it seems like he's just convenient. He's one of those convenient niggas. And when I say that, meaning he like to fuck bitches on a job because it's convenient to him. Okay? That's where he meet pussy at because it's convenient to him. Y'all all bottled up in a building together for eight, nine, ten hours a day. And, of course, some attractions might come to play. So that's a convenient pussy for him. So you think that if he stops messing with this bitch, another bitch going to come to your job and he going to fuck with her too. He is a convenience nigga, okay? And he was a convenience nigga for you and he convenience nigga for this bitch. So don't worry about them. However... Like I told you, the nigga want to keep running his mouth and he want to hold conversations with you or he trying to come on to you and come at you. Let him know, listen, we at work. This is not the time or the place and I'm not interested. You could say a professional like that. Me personally, I'll tell him, get the fuck out of my face because I'm at work. However, we at work, so we can't say that. But on a professional level, don't quit your job. Don't leave. People at work know your business. Who gives a shit? We not there to make friends. People fail to realize this. This is work. I come here for a fucking paycheck to pay my bills. I don't give a fuck about none of these bitches here at work or none of these Negroes at work. I don't care. We came here to make money, and that's all there is to it. If you meet one good friend at work, then so be it. That's good. But here's the thing. I came to work. I don't give a fuck about you or that bitch over there that you fucking with now. But what I would care about is if you stay out of my space, get out of my face, and go ahead back to your girlfriend. Or do you need me to tell her? You know what I'm saying? But we don't need to do all that. There don't need to be no arguments at work. You don't need to get into an altercation, altercations because you at work and you need your paycheck. And I'm about to tell you like this. Don't lose your job for no dusty bitch or some fucking losing ass man. They not worth it. They're really not. Neither one of them are. And you know what's so sad about it? This bitch at your job know that you was fucking with him already. I'm sorry. Me personally, I'm not going to fuck with that man. Because you already fucked with him. And if I was, I damn sure ain't going to let nobody at fucking work know that I'm fucking with him. So she looks stupid already. She just looked fucking stupid. You don't really look stupid because you already had him. You was probably the first one on your job. And yeah, your business might have got out. But your business got all out. All the shit that he did to you behind your back. 
but your fucking co-workers still want to fuck with him. So she's a lame-ass bitch. She's dumb, hard up for a relationship. So in reality, when you look at it, she's looking stupid because she still want to fuck with him. And if you want to fuck with him, then go right ahead. You've already been warned. Everybody here already knows how he is. And if you think he's going to be any different because you're so fucking special, then you got to highly mistake him. So let her to continue making herself look stupid. And what's going to happen is then all her business is going to be put out there and it's going to override your fucking dumb dirt that's happened with this man. And it's always going to be about what she did. And Oh, girl, you knew how he was treating Tammy. Why you even fuck with him in the first place? You knew how he was doing Tammy, so she's really going to look stupid. And continue to let her look stupid. Continue not to say anything, but let that man know, listen, we at work, and I will really appreciate it if you leave me alone okay i'm not here for any type of relationships i'm not here for any type of friends you got your girlfriend over there now take your ass down the fucking aisle and go to her and please leave me alone and get out of my face that's just what i would say and that's just how i would do it so on that note divas i did run out of time so i told you guys that i wouldn't be able to do two i'm um, three but i did and i'm just like really nice and Feeling mellow, mellowed out right now with my drink. Yes. Um, and so, let Tammy know and Jordan know, what would you do? What is your opinion? Would you tell your husband that you had some confessions? Would you continue to be jealous at work and, and quit because of some, some next bitch? What would you do? Post all your information or your comments below. And as always, stay diva and divolicious. As always, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys on my next video.